I'm Professor Meg Case, and I'm the chair of the Department of English Literature and Creative Writing. At RWU, those two programs are in the same department, which actually gives us um, some kind of exciting course combinations that students can take advantage of. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, first, I wanted to check with Zachary and Claire to see if either of you are interested. Um, sometimes we have students who want to get their teaching certification in English. So it would be a combined major of English literature and secondary education. Are either of you interested in that? Because one of our students, Rachel, she's waving now, um, she's doing that now. So she would be a great contact. So I'll look at the chat to see if either of you respond to that question. Okay, um, Zachary says that um, not sure if teaching is what I wanna do. So that makes sense. We, um, we do encourage people if they're interested in the literature part of the English literature program just to major in straight English literature. We have both um, kinds of majors in the program, those who are doing a double degree with teaching in high school and those who are just doing English literature. We also have students like um, Kayla and Julia who are doing other double major and minor combinations. So they typed their what they're majoring and minoring in in the chat box so that you can look at those. Um, okay, good. Well, let's see. Let's go over a couple of the highlights of the program. Um, we are sitting, uh, if my screen share is working, you're looking at the department web page for English literature. And um, I'm going to minimize. So I might, <clears throat> Colton, I'm going to minimize the chat box so I can move around the program. If you see that somebody is asking a question, would you let me know? Yep, no problem. Okay, great. So if you are here on the English Literature webpage, um, a good place to go is um, actually current students to see some of the highlights of the department. I'm gonna start with the courses, which is its own tab over here on the right. I think it's one of the um, highlights of the program are the number of uh, and types of courses that we have. So this is an online summer course in Reawakening the Gods and Goddesses of Ancient Rome. That's this summer online. But for fall, and these would be courses that would be available starting next fall. And if you were enrolling in Roger Williams, you would sign up for these over the summer. Um, the first one is Serpent, Sword, Symbols, and Sustainability, which has a crazy title, but it actually covers all of those things. It's one of our most popular courses, usually fills up right away. Um, and it looks, it's a lot like what it says. I'd say the most important word is symbols, that you really start to understand how symbols work across time, through nature, and across literature. Um, we also um, offer courses in cultural studies, which is an exciting thing about the RWU English Literature Program. Um, not all English literature programs do this. And this cultural studies, CULTST 100, is a sort of a beginning introduction to what cultural studies is and it is basically it's a lot like english literature except that what you're studying is not always literature it might be movies or films or advertisements even anything that's part of popular culture is fair game for cultural studies then we have a um, sort of one of our most exciting classes also very popular form and poetry and it, if you're not a poetry person, you might be surprised. People who think they don't like poetry come out of this class saying, oh my gosh, I love poetry. This was the best class ever. So it, that counts as an introductory course in English. Um, this, is, this credit, this burst course is just a one credit course that anyone can take. It's kind of like a book club. They have a different book every year and they meet um, just an hour a week instead of the usual three hours a week. And they talk about the book and they do some research. This English 210 Myth, Fantasy, and the Imagination is a myth course. We have a lot of courses dealing with myth. So I'd say that's probably a strength of the program. If that's an interest of yours, there are lots of ways to study that. And you'll see that in a minute. Um, this is a reading as a writer, uh, our superhero, the sonnet. And when I talked about before the fact that having English literature and creative writing in the same program gives us some exciting opportunities. This is one of those courses because it's a literature course, but the students who take it are actually also just rolling up their sleeves and writing some sonnets 
they're not being graded on how good their sonnets are, but they're really getting a strong sense of form and in a really experiential learning way. So it's kind of an exciting course. And then we have a traditional course, Early American Literature. Uh, that's every fall and then every spring is the next one that starts <clears throat> 1800 and forward. We're also offering Shakespeare in the fall and this one is taught through the theater department. So you actually get to do, again, we're really big on experiential learning in our department. So you actually get to act out various aspects of um, plays in the Shakespeare class. Here's a cultural studies course called Girl Culture. And um, it talks a lot about gender, uh, focus on the development of girls as they grow into teens and young adulthood. Uh, they talk about the social location. And if you ever wanted to read more about these classes, you can click on the read more button and learn a little bit more about them. Love and Hip Hop, another cultural studies course. And then you can also take 300 level writing classes. Those count towards English literature because we want our majors to be really good at writing. So we offer them writing courses that study rhetorical theory. A uh, special topics course. This one is young adult literature here and now. And another special topics course, gods, monsters, and heroes. And another special topics course. So special topics courses are ones that aren't necessarily offered every year. They're special topic chances that come up and uh, if they sound good to you, we encourage you just to jump right in because they may not be offered again, but we always have special topics courses on the books. And this one is film adaptations of early British literature. So early British literature starts way back with Beowulf, uh, goes through Canterbury Tales, Paradise Lost. So this course is looking both at the literary versions of those texts and the translation of those texts into film. So that's another exciting class. And then students um, in the RWU English program do something called a senior thesis. And it's actually a two semester course. So it's a capstone course, two semesters long. The first semester is usually reading and research. And the second semester runs sort of, um, it's called Oxford tutorial style. Students meet with a faculty member once a week. They've been writing all week and they bring their writing and research for a, an hour long conference with the professor. And by the end of that second semester, they have a 20 page research essay so I've been talking a lot, so I'm gonna see if um, all three of the students who are here with us today, Julia, Rachel, and Kayla, have all participated in the senior thesis capstone. So um, if I, I'll go to the page, the capstone page, and maybe you guys could talk about your experience in the capstone, because all three of these students are seniors. Maybe yeah, we'll- so I think that the um, the senior thesis was a really great kind of like wrap up experience of everything that we learned and like how to write, how to synthesize information. And it was really, um, it was really difficult, but it was a really good bonding experience. And we also got like a lot of help and a lot of information from our um, thesis advisor, Dr. Case. So. <laughs> Overall, it was difficult, but it was really kind of a rewarding experience. And this is <clears throat> this is Kayla here, and um, a short description of her. Uh, was it twenty pages, Kayla, or was it more than twenty? It was like twenty something. I 20 don't know. <laughs> it <was a> <laughs> I know. It seems so long ago. It was just last fall. <laughs> and here's Rachel. Sorry, I have to unmute myself. Um, hi, I'm Rachel. So I, my thesis was about um, uh, comedians in cars getting coffee, if you're familiar with the show. Um, I'm talking about that like line of political commenta commentary in comedy um, and like societal criticism in comedy. So I thought it was really interesting. Um, I really loved thesis because you really got to pick your own topic. That was like one of the big things for me that I loved because I, I switched around originally from two different topics um, the summer going into my senior year because I, we started um, doing some research there. So I was going from talking about Fleetwood Mac, um, the Rumors album, and Comedians of Cars and Coffee, and it was like super difficult. I didn't know which one I wanted to do, but 
because of the meetings we had once a week with Professor Case, um, I was really able to like focus in and decide what it is that I wanted. And I think that Kayla kind of hit it on the head and it's like a lot of work. It'll make you sweat, but um, it's really <laughs> rewarding at the end um, to turn it in. And then you do like a, I'm sure you'll talk about it, but you do like a presentation at the end and like present your, your thesis to all your peers and teachers. And it's just a really great feeling once it's, Yes, thanks for mentioning that, Rachel. At the end, there's a big colloquium and we invite the entire university community. Um, the students can invite their parents, their family, their friends, and we gather in a large room, conference style. Students give a 10 minute pricey of their paper and then we open it up for questions. Um, so before we, well, let's go down to Julia and you guys can, Julia, what was it like uh, answering questions? answering questions at the panel yeah horrifying but <laughs> in a good way so I don't like public speaking so you'd be asked a question and think like what if I don't know the answer but the great part about thesis is we spent so much time with our topics and we all became such experts on what we were talking about that it was kind of fun to share our knowledge so as soon as the scariness of being asked a question was over it was like oh I got this and it was so much fun to be able to like share what you know with people that think similar to you and actually cared about all the research and work that you put into it at least that's what I felt um thesis class itself was actually my favorite course or two courses at Roger Williams what I loved about it was the two-part thing we started as juniors so it takes some of the pressure off your senior year because not every major does that um, so we didn't have to work on our thesis at the end of senior year right now, whereas other people still are. So that kind of makes your senior year relaxing. And again, we're such a small community as English majors, like you get to know everyone so well in your class. And I missed them second semester because it was like a little hangout, like we had to get work done, but we all became so close and it was just, it didn't feel like class. It felt like just a fun time. That's right. I forgot to say that you're meeting with the professor once a week for an hour one on one, but we also had a three hour seminar time that we used as almost like a study hall. We all got together, um, popcorn, sometimes pajamas, and um, just people had a chance to feel because it's kind of a lonely process. So that was a chance where everybody could um, get together and if they had questions. Sometimes we had sessions where a librarian would come in and talk about bibliographies. Um, but it really, it really is a bonding experience and it, it's, it's, a, it's a hard challenge, but students generally feel like they've really accomplished something. And then they have a 20 page research paper that some of them use to apply to grad school. Um, some of them revise it later and get it published. So it's, it's an amazing thing. And I'm always so proud of the students during the question and answer because a lot of them, like Julia said, they're quite nervous about public question and answer, but when it actually comes down to it, they do such a great job just on their feet, um, engaging with the audience's questions. So I'll just go through a couple of the titles because as you can tell from the three that we've mentioned already, they're really, um, this, is, this was a cultural studies focused uh, capstone class. So students could choose any aspect of culture. So it could be popular culture, but it could be literary as well. So Garrett Bolton did A Dirt Bag's American Dream, an ideological analysis of rugged individualism in Free Solo. And Free Solo was the documentary about um, the person, <clears throat> Alex Honnold, who climbed El Capitan in, um, he, it, it had never been climbed before and he did it without dying, which was quite amazing. Um, Jennifer Bryan um, is really into Batman, as you can tell, she dressed for the thesis in Batman clothes and she um, did an amazing job analyzing um, the dark knight of morality versus the clown prince of crime. So she was looking at the dark knight um, and brought out ideological components. She's a double major with legal studies. So she actually was looking at issues of justice and the law as well as ideology in the paper. So she combined her two majors really nicely in her thesis. And here's our Kayla. And we didn't read her title. Kayla, will you read your title? A Man's Woman, A Gender Role Critique of Seinfeld's Elaine and Susan. So and it's, it's a great title because it really tells you what the paper's about. So we actually had two Seinfeld presentations. Kayla's was on the comedy show Seinfeld and Rachel's was on the Seinfeld's Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Then we had um, Taylor doing uh, an analysis of true crime. 
and she was another one who really struggled to find a topic. And um, my favorite is when students come up to me and ask, can I, can I do my paper on? And you can tell that they're hoping against hope that I'll say yes. And Taylor was certain I was going to say no, true crime. It's not, it's not literary enough. But she did an amazing job looking at the genre of true crime. And the research that she did and the theories she came up with, no one has come up with them yet. So that would be something that if she wanted to publish later on, she probably could. Um, Chloe did hers on a movie that you may or may not have heard of called The Master, award-winning um, film. And she was looking at ideology, uh, different types of ideology in that movie. And then Julia, as we said, Julia decided to do Jane Austen's Emma, but she compared the novel to the more recent movie called Clueless, which is based on Emma. And that was awesome. And uh, I like uh, Julia's short description here. Popular culture is only good for entertainment, right? As if, which is a catchphrase from Clueless. This close comparison of ideology and satire and Jane Austen's Emma and its 20th century rendition, Amy Heckerling's Clueless, reveals the depths of Clueless's mastery. So then we have Jeannie Reyes doing a um, comparison between Twilight Zone and Black Mirror, and Michael Sanicondro doing Born to Run as a concept album, which if you know Bruce Springsteen, um, that brought in a lot of Springsteen fans to the colloquium. And last but not least, Riley Spillane tackled Game of Thrones in her thesis. Okay, so that was a lot of information. I'm gonna throw it back to the prospective uh, students, the, the Zachary and Claire, and see, do you guys have any questions at this point or anything you wanna ask? Okay, I'm seeing, I don't think so, and all good here. That's good. Um, let's see, let's do a couple more highlights. So if we go into current students, um, we can talk about internships. So a lot of students ask, if I am majoring in English, how will I get a job? Um, we did a survey of our 2018 majors and we had a 100% employment rate they um, all got jobs and they actually all got jobs within six months of graduation. And one of the reasons for that success, there's two things that happen in our program that you should look for in any, um, any humanities major. One is a focus on internships. Is the school and the major, are they set up to support students finding internships? So one of the ways we support students is to publish, when students do get internships, we publish them here on the webpage so that other students can see what kinds of internships are out there. So I'll just scroll slowly through and you can see the list of lots of students have done a lot of different internships. And mostly they found them on their own, but because they're published here, it can give you ideas of what you might wanna, what you might wanna look at. So that's that. And then the, another thing that's I think unique to our program is our focus on helping students think about how to use their majors in the humanities, whether it's English or history or political science, um, how do you translate that into a career? So we have career events every semester and they're interactive events and it's just for English literature and creative writing majors because often they're not quite sure how to translate that major into a job. So we invite keynote speakers um, who are who have gotten their majors in English or creative writing to give a keynote talk and then we do interactive activities that help students um, not just work on their resumes although we do that too but think about how the skills that you're learning in English and creative writing are actually exactly what a lot of employers are looking for so contrary to popular belief English literature and creative writing are incredibly employable majors so if you love them don't don't let anyone tell you you won't get a job with them. It's just not true. Quite the opposite is true. You can definitely get a job as long as you're doing internships and thinking about how to translate the skills you have to interview situations. So these are this is a list of people who were at some of these events. So we don't put everything on this page because it would be too much information, but we do a few highlights to give you a sense of what these career events are like. Okay, let's see. 
events and awards. So one of the neat things I think about the program, and I'll let the students speak to this too after I whiz through this page, is that we have um, a lot, we are, a, as the student said, we're a close knit program. We're small enough that people do get to know each other. And I think we're a really friendly program. I have never seen anybody um, not just be completely welcoming to new students. If a transfer student comes in or if first years are in a program with a lot of upperclassmen, it's always immediately very friendly. And I think that's students feel very welcome in the program and class discussions are one of my favorite things. Students feel very comfortable um, with ideas. Of course, it's a little hard as a first year student to feel comfortable right away, but I would say within three or four weeks, students realize I can say, I can ask anything. I can ask questions. I can contribute ideas. Um, and one of the reasons people feel comfortable together is that we have um, events in the program where people can get to know each other outside of class. This is one of my favorite. This is the Victorian high tea in English gardens. So one of our professors has um, lovely gardens. They're English style gardens. And she hosts a Victorian tea sort of every other year. And these, these are pictures from that. We sometimes have a mentorship program, especially when students ask for it, where uh, we take an incoming first year and pair them with a junior or senior so they can have somebody to talk to about maybe which classes to choose or if they have questions that they just would like to ask a student. Um, this career events, that's what I talked about before, that we have specialized career events just for our majors. Uh, student presentations. I don't know if that will. I don't think that's going to click anywhere. So students do, um, they can take their papers to conferences. And um, sadly, we were going to go to a conference in, um, well, it was actually this past week. We would have been at the Popular Culture Conference. Um, actually, Julia and Kayla, who are both here today, had papers ready to be present. They were accepted, but because of the COVID-19, the conference was canceled. But we um, mentor students through the process of applying for grant money, and our students end up usually being 100% funded, except for food. That's kind of on your own. Um, this, the picture here is from the PCA when it was in San Diego, which was kind of exciting. This year would have been in Philadelphia. And we also have a Sigma Tau Delta conference, which is the English Honorary Society. And that um, has conferences all over the country as well. And so students can present papers through that. So those, that, those are some highlights there. Uh, study abroad, Let's see if this will click for us, yeah. So a lot of students study abroad. These are some pictures of past students with quick little testimonials about where they studied and what they got out of the experience. But we actually have in our group today, students who have studied abroad. So um, do you guys want to talk about maybe start with Rachel and tell us where you've studied abroad? Sure. Um, so I, like when I was in high school, I always said to myself, I was going to study abroad for a whole semester. Like I'm going to London, no one can tell me no. Um, and then I, my junior year came around and I seriously just loved campus a lot. I didn't want to not be there for a semester. It made me sad. So I decided to go um, for two like mini spring or spring breaks, mini, um, what is this called? Study abroad sessions. So I went to Rome um, the summer after my sophomore year for two weeks. And then I went to Greece um, May of my junior year for three weeks. And they were like, awesome. So I went with um, one of the education professors for the Rome one, and it was about um, just like art and culture in Italy. And then the Greece one, I took, I took Greek. Um, so it was just about like culture and art and it was awesome. We lived there and we went to Santorini and Athens and Olympia, we went to five different cities in three weeks and stayed in like super like beautiful places. And it was just like, the best time ever. <laughs> yeah. Highly recommend. Yeah. And who, Kayla, was it you or Julia that studied abroad? I did. Um, oh, okay. I was like Rachel, I didn't do a full semester. I did a winter intercession, so it was for three weeks over winter break, and I went to Spain and Morocco. Um, and it was so much fun. That's another great thing about Roger Williams. I didn't think I'd be able to study abroad because I started out as English and secondary education. 
and I ended up switching to just English and got new minors instead of education because it wasn't for me. So I thought I wouldn't have time in my schedule to study abroad, which I didn't for a whole semester. But again, there were so many programs in the middle. So it was a great experience. I didn't study English while over there. It was for my business classes, but I do highly recommend no matter where you go to school, definitely try to study abroad, especially if traveling something you want to do. Kayla, did you get to study abroad? Nope, you'll have to, you'll have to do something abroad sometime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really fun. Um, Rachel, what were you studying when you were in Greece? Um, Greek, we took a Greek class. And um, it's a really good question. I'm, and was it mythology that you studied in Rome? We studied mythology in Rome and then Greek, Greece was, I think I just took Greek. That would make sense. I, yeah, I think that was only, I think it was just one class. Yeah, because the short ones, you don't usually have a chance to do more than one thing. <laughs> That's Greek. Um, but I did want to say one thing to Zachary, because I know you said you were thinking about education, and I'm secondary ed in English, so I'm going to try to reel you in. But one thing that Julia just said that reminded me was that um, when I was looking at schools in high school, one thing I noticed was that a lot of other colleges you only get into the into a school to like observe and start doing lessons with students when you're a senior. Um, and I didn't love that because what if I spend three years doing this and then I get to student teaching and hate it. Um, so Roger Williams, you get you have a placement starting your sophomore year um, and you have to spend like certain amount of hours every semester and it's great and freshman year you do like some observations, but you don't have like a set school. Um, so like I know Julia, you did secondary education and like she was able to like go to placements in local schools and see if she liked it and she ended up not and she was able to switch in time. Um, such as something to think about if you are looking in that direction. That's a really good point to check if, if you are thinking of education, how soon do they get you in the schools? Yeah, because it matters. <laughs> so yeah, luckily I like it so it doesn't matter, but <laughs> yeah. Let's see, something's blinking up here. Do we have so you don't pick your placement, you actually are placed at like schools nearby, but there are a couple of different ones. So if you have a specific age group you want to work within or a certain type of like classroom, like they work with you to try to pick it. But again, Rachel can speak more to that. Yeah, so um, you're, you can, if you're, I will say, if you're a student athlete, they do tend to um, place you closer to Bristol because you have practice. Um, I'm not a student athlete, so they would put me a little bit further away, which is totally fine. Um, but that's not always the case. I was, I've been in Bristol directly, Portsmouth, um, Newport, Middletown, so kind of the surrounding areas. But I'm doing the um, grad program next year for special education. And the director emailed us last week and said, give me your top three um, districts that you'd like to work in. So I gave him like my surrounding districts that I'll be living in. Um, so they do try to accommodate as much as possible. And if you ever have like a problem in your school or like with your teacher you're working with or anything like that, the placement office is like super helpful um, and they'll accommodate as much as they can to make your experience successful. Yeah. That was a good question, Zach or Zachary. Um, so if there aren't more questions, maybe what we'll do is have our three real live students just talk about what maybe highlights you guys that we haven't mentioned yet, things you've enjoyed about the programs, um, or maybe questions you had when you came here that you know the answers to now. Just anything you want to add to the conversation for students who are thinking about maybe doing English literature or coming to Roger Williams. We'll start with Rachel. Um, okay. So I guess when I came in, I remember, you know, academic, but also your social life, it like definitely matters where you go to school because it's like your social life will be different at many different schools, depending on like the culture of that school. Um, so I will say that like, I don't know how to word this correctly, but like, <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's very, this program is very like manageable and like, especially coming in as a first year, it sort of lets you like t manage your time in like really great ways. I feel like that's what's my experience. Like I, I think I was nervous coming in to like how am I get, I, you have a lot of time on your hands when you come to school just to let you know you have like a whole day and you can do whatever you want. You can take a nap. Um, and <laughs> so I think like that was sort of stressing me out. Like I didn't have a, 
a schedule all the time, but I think the pro, like, as a whole, I was really able to sort of create my own methods and how I was going to take things and learn them. And if that makes sense, am I making sense right now? I just, me because I <laughs> knew you, I've been your advisor since year one. Yeah. And um, I think of you as somebody who became incredibly good at time management yeah. and the amount of things you were doing and managing to get everything in on time. I thought it was amazing. <laughs> Thanks. You clearly yeah. did learn. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I will say, especially as like education, you have to spend time in the classroom um, for your senior year, first semester, you've spent a hundred hours in the classroom, which is a lot of time plus five more classes. So it's a lot, but like, you're going to be fine if you do that. <laughs> you okay. <laughs> You'll learn a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Kayla, how about you? What, what are some things you've enjoyed or questions you think you remember having? Well, I remember I never really would have thought that I would have gone into English as a major because in high school I had like a lot of bad experiences with English and like talking to other people like a lot of people do. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just so much better like coming here. Like I felt like the classes we were more challenged because the professors believed that like we could really like do it in like a more advanced way than in high school and also I felt that it was like a lot more supportive and one-on-one -on -one than before so I thought it was just a really great environment for learning and also like building self-confidence in like writing and speaking in class and that kind of stuff. That's great I didn't realize you had a less than exciting high school English experience. I never would have guessed. <laughs> you always seem so engaged in classes. Julia, how about you? So what I would say is um, the school definitely isn't for everyone. It is small. It is a homey feel. So if you want like close friendships, like you don't need to have the most outgoing social life. There is stuff to do socially here, but how I feel about the school is if you want to get involved, there are ways to get involved. But if you don't want to, you might feel a little bit alone. Like you really have to put yourself out there. It's so easy. There's so many things to get involved with. And again, like the community is like, I've never had a class with over 20 students, I don't think. So it's so individual and you really find, you can find your best friends. Like I know I lived in Kayla's Hall freshman year and we were like friendly, we weren't best friends. And now it's senior year and we've had almost every English class together and we're like, it's <laughs> So you can really find your place, but only just keep in mind, like, are you a big school person or a small school person? Do you want like the homey small feel or would you rather see a million different people in a day? It's very like, you have to know yourself to know if this is the type of environment you want to be in. That's a really good point because you, you need to think about questions like that to get the right fit for you. Um, maybe we'll end with just uh, one or two highlights. They can be very idiosyncratic, you know, a funny moment in class or your favorite book that you read as an English major or Victorian high tea, what, just some kind of highlight that speaks to English at RWU. The best book you'll ever read is in Professor Case's class called The Woman in White and it'll blow your mind. It's so much fun. <laughs> it, you'll, you're gonna I was Brit Lit too, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was such a great book. And how, do you remember how many pages it was? A lot. It was like 600 pages long. Yeah, but it goes really fast. Riley, one of, um, she's secondary in English with me. She read it again last summer, like for fun, because it's so good, so. <laughs> I did not know that. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I love that book. And so to make it manageable, I broke it into 30 page chunks over. So we started it at the beginning of the semester and we finished it sort of right before the end. So yeah, and it's fun for me because it starts out a little slow. And then after a while, people just, they're not, they're, they're reading ahead because they want to find out what happened. So, and there's a lot of information in there about the Victorian time period. So that was a Victorian literature text. That's so funny about Riley reading that in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Kayla, how about you? Uh oh, you're muted. Zachary has a question in the oh. group chat, if we want to answer that. Oh, AP scores in the Honors College? Okay, so AP scores, um, when you, at orientation, when you're signing up for classes, by then you'll probably have your AP scores. So you'll work with whatever um, professor is helping you to register for orientation. And we'll make sure that you get credit for those scores and that you don't take 
So sometimes those scores, if they're good enough, they can get you out of certain classes. So then you can take the next level up. So that will work with that at orientation. And if, you're, if you don't have your scores yet, but orientation will kind of, will try to work it so that you're, it's easy for you to switch things out if you end up getting say a four or five and that lets you out of a class. The honors college, RW doesn't have an honors college. We have an honors program. I don't know if that distinction means anything to you, um, but it's not a separate application to a college. It's just an application to the program. And um, I think Colton Bright can probably connect to you or give you the information for the application to the honors program. Um, yeah, so students have um, applied and been admitted to the program at this point. Um, so Zachary, if you have specific questions, um, I believe we have done one session similar to this, but um, I would definitely guide you to our website. Um, and then of course you can follow up with me or your specific admission counselor with any specific questions. Um, but if you've been admitted to the program, um, there's some fantastic components to it. The $2,000 experiential grant, of course, being one of them, and then the living learning community that's available. Um, if you've been waitlisted or if you didn't apply and are looking to learn more, um, students can um, move into the honors program and apply once they're at Roger Williams as well. So as a first semester or second semester student, you can apply and enter the honors program at that time as well. Um, so we are still working. If you are um, on the honors wait list, we are still working through that at this point. Um, but as I said, if you have any specific questions, um, I'd be happy to connect with you um, offline over the phone or over email um, to chat about that. Or I would encourage you to connect with your specific admission counselor. I could maybe help you too. I'm actually teaching the incoming living learning cohort for the 60 honors program students coming in in the fall. They all take the same course with the same professor. It gives them a really good living learning component. Um, and there's a unit in that class on uh, the dark side of chocolate. And we visit a chocolate factory, which <laughs> sounds all wonderful, but there's a lot of research involved. And um, we read literature and philosophy in that class. So, um, so if you have, if you end up, um, I don't know if you've been admitted or not to the honors program, but if you were, that would be one course that you would be taking. Oh, you've, you've been accepted. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um, the way one thing, not all honors programs are different at different universities, but at Roger Williams, the honors program students, um, let's see, what's the shortest way to say this? All students have to take general education courses. At Roger Williams, honors program students have to take, I think it's four out of five of your general education courses. You take them with other honors students. And you start out and the first one that you take is with all the other on incoming honors students. And then after that, you'll be just in a class with 20 of them. And it could be first years, sophomores, juniors, and seniors all mixed. Um, and so, then there's a couple of other one credit and two credit experiences that you have. And then there's a capstone that you take at the end. So there's basically a list of certain courses that you have to take and then some experiential um, opportunities that you have for service learning and the capstone component that's connected to your major. So most students have a capstone in their major. Like we were talking about the English literature senior thesis colloquium capstone. Um, it, they have something like that in political science and history as well. And then if you're an honor student, there's an extra piece of reflection that you do on that experience and you present that in public. So those are, that's kind of a quick overview of the program, but it doesn't, it's designed not to add work to your, um, your course of study, but it's designed to help you stay in touch with honor students your whole four years. Um, so that you have classes with people that you met in the honors residence hall your first year. Um, it creates an incredible community. I love teaching the honors courses because the students um, will tell me things like, yeah, we just couldn't stop talking about David Hume. He's an 18th century enlightenment philosopher. And I, I had presented to them his theory that we don't exist. We don't actually have an identity. We just think we do. <clears throat> and so they were getting really mad. And two of them just, I think, stayed up 
through most of the night talking about it. And then they came to class the next day um, and just were firing off their theories. So it's, it's kind of great that way that students get really engaged. And because they're living and learning together their first semester, they really get to know each other really well. I can attest to the living side of it. I wasn't an honor student, but I was an RA um, at Stonewall, which is where the honors housing is. So first of all, it's a really nice building. Um, you'd like it and you're with other honor students and then there's an honors classroom right in that basement and they always put in an RA with them that is also in the honors programs so that they can help them through and answer questions. And you don't have to live there all four years. You can break off, make your own friends. It's not like you're stuck there. But if you want to continue to live in, in that honors housing with them, you can opt to stay. So you could stay there your whole four years if you wanted to. It's right. I forgot that um, that honors classroom is pretty special. So I teach an eight o'clock section and a nine o'clock section. And the eight o'clock students will often roll downstairs in their slippers because they're just living right upstairs. And so they go to their eight o'clock class and then they'll go upstairs and change and go have breakfast. So it's, it's a really neat classroom. It's got rolling furniture. Does that help? Uh, are, were there other questions about the honors program? Those were good questions. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. <clears throat> all right then. Colton, I think that's, that's all we have to present if there aren't further questions. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Kayla, Julia, was there anything else you wanted to round out? Um, and share uh, that was similar to what Rachel shared regarding kind of specific books you've read, specific spaces on campus, anything else about the program that you think stands out to you or that's worth sharing? Um, I think as Dr. Case mentioned a little bit, the um, tea party is really cool because it's like very unique and it's not something you really would ever get to experience anywhere else. And it was just fun to kind of like dress up and go and have tiny sandwiches and talk to everyone. So it's definitely like a fun, unique thing that you wouldn't get to do anywhere else. And we played, did you play croquet? I just watch, I'm very uncoordinated, so I wouldn't want any <laughs> accidental injuries. <laughs> yeah, the tea party's a lot of fun and you can actually help with it if you want. Not that everyone loves helping, but I helped make all the little finger sandwiches the second year I went. And it's really cool because a lot of alumni come to it. That's how like memorable this event is. You get to meet other alumni while you're making finger sandwiches and then you get to dress up all fancy in English and the gardens are pretty. And it's so cute. Like you get an actual invitation, like not an evite. You get like this handwritten invitation and you're like, wow, my professors know me so well. Like it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. I know for the first year students, it can be they're like, a what, a tea party? <laughs> so we have to really explain, no, it's, it's actually fun. Now me and Rachel went together the first year. We were like, should we be worried? Like, what is this? <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And the sandwiches are great. And so is the lemonade punch. They are, they are good. <laughs> and amazing cakes. All right, I think, I think that's it for highlights, but I wanted to stress that if you have, if you think of any questions later, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, you have my contact information in the chat space and the contact information of the students, plus their different majors and minors. So please feel free if you have questions just to shoot us a quick email. That's, we're always happy to help. Yeah, and I would just um, want to thank you both again, Zachary, Claire, and our Roger Williams students for taking the time to do this. Um, if there are questions that come up, again, for you, Zachary and Claire, um, whether it's academically focused, uh, financial aid, or anything otherwise that you haven't been able to get answered through the different web or virtual sessions we've been offering, feel free to reach out to myself or the other admission counselors in our office. If you don't know who your admission counselor is, um, check your email. They may be, they probably have sent you some emails. But we do also have a staff directory online if you search Roger Williams admission staff. So thanks again and hope to see you on campus in the fall. All right, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>